So what I've done is um, I've basically drafted up a painting in three stages just to give you an example of the different steps that I would work through when I was normally painting. It takes me quite a long time to, uh, to do a painting because we've only got quite a short period of time. Um, here is one I prepared earlier. <laughs> the inspiration for my work really comes from the environment um, and my love of sort of animals and wildlife and observing uh, people as well sometimes that uh, pass through the village and so on. Uh, quite often it involves um, animals or between um, a squirrel and a butterfly or a dog and a bee or something like that. So there's almost a little uh, narrative going on in the image. So what I normally have is an idea in my head of something that I think I'd like to paint that, that might be fun to do. Quick pencil sketch, just a, an outline drawing really, just to give me an idea of the composition and how that's gonna work. So what I've done from my sketch is um, I've just really scaled that up onto my canvas board. I like to paint on board because I, I think it's a lot easier than canvas to work with because you can lean on it, and it doesn't bend or kink. And I paint it with a, um, a modelling paste, so I put on two layers of modelling paste to let them dry in between and then I give them a good sand down and then I put a layer of primer on. Um, it gives you a, a nice textured um, surface. It really takes the, the paint well. Do many of you use acrylic paints or do you yes. prefer? Yeah. Some people prefer oils. Or I work in layers and that's the great thing about working with acrylic paints because they dry so quickly. They're just so versatile, they're fantastic. So I would start just to uh, paint in my first layer and that's what I'm going to do at this end of the canvas. So I'm using a very bright green and a white. Lots of kitchen roll. And um, these paint pots are great things as well. I don't know if any of you I've ever used one of these. I only invested uh, in one a couple of years ago myself as a treat, but <laughs> it's a bit sad really. But uh, they have a base in the bottom with holes in, and it means um, when you're washing your brush, if you have the left leftover paint falls through to the bottom, so it keeps your water clean and it keeps your colours clean so they don't get all muddy because you're not washing your brush in uh, muddy water. And I'm going to start to paint in a first layer. I'm using quite a big brush and the first layer you're really just blocking in the colours. You're just wanting to cover the canvas and just sort of fill out the, the white. And of course the general rule of thumb is that you have the, you know, the sort of lighter colours in the background and your stronger colours in the foreground. I notice Elsa that you paint on different sized canvases, different sized boards. Some small, some large, some long and thin. Is there any rationale behind that or just whatever takes your fancy at the time? <coughs> it's nice to give the, uh, the galleries a selection of different sizes so you have different uh, price points for, for people really. Yeah. Um, so obviously the small, the small painting is quite affordable for most people, whereas the big ones are uh, a bit more expensive. And if you're putting in maybe half a dozen pictures to a gallery, they like to have a variety of uh, sizes. Yeah. Sort of painted in most of the background around mm. this uh, collie dog here. I don't paint very with very thick paint, really, which is why I think I like using the modelling paste to give a bit of um, texture. The advantage of not painting layers of very thick paint is that if you decide to change the outline of something, you're not left with a, a ridge of um, paint. It's easier to paint light on dark. So for my collie dog here, I'm going to make the, um, the first layer of the fur, I'm going to make really dark and then the subsequent layers and the the, uh, the furry texture that will go on will be 
lighter. Do you have a painting gouache? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that was from the heart. <laughs> uh, very, it's very difficult to paint in gouache. Very difficult. Uh, water, watercolours. Does anybody here paint with watercolours? So difficult. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> and gouache as well. So, it's so difficult to paint with. The wonderful thing about uh, acrylic paint is um, if you make a mistake, you just paint over it because it, it dries and you paint over it. So hard using uh, watercolours and uh, gouache. Can I ask how you mix the black um, this is a, I'm using a Payne's Grey and just a touch of um, t titanium white. So I'm just going to use a slightly lighter grey for this, uh, the legs in the foreground. Do any of you have your own animals that you use as models? Mm. Yes. <laughs> They're a great inspiration, I think. Mm -hmm. So this is a, our collie dog, Jack, who features in quite a few of my paintings. He's six now, very happy being a pet, loves being a studio dog, that's his absolute favourite. Th thinks he's um, done a hard day's work if he's spent a day in the studio snoozing on the day bed. <laughs> So I'm just putting in a base layer of white and at the moment I'm not really worrying too much about shading, I'm just really trying to cover the canvas. Once you've got that first layer on, I think you start to feel like you're really making progress. Sometimes it feels a bit daunting when you've got a, an empty canvas sitting in front of you. Do any of you, you think that and you've got along, you look at it and you think, oh. <laughs> But once you get that first layer on, you can start to feel that you're making a bit of progress. The other thing I have used recently, Liquitex have brought out some acrylic inks, which are permanent, <coughs> and, and uh, they're quite good for adding detail. So you can see what I've start, started to do here with the first third. I've just sketched it out, and uh, I'm just really filling in a base layer. So that's how I would start with the whole of the painting. So the next section that uh, I completed earlier is one where I've, I've got that first layer on so the canvas is starting to fill up and what I'm going to do now is uh, I've, I've let that dry. The important thing to remember with acrylic paint is if you try to paint a second layer on top of a first layer and the first layer isn't dry it will start to lift the paint off so it's very important that you let it dry between layers and it doesn't take that long to dry sometimes it's just a few hours will be enough and um, sometimes I'll leave it overnight and then I'll come back to it the next day and then I'll start to add on the second layer and with the second layer I'm starting to think more about tones and shadows and uh, a bit add, I'm adding a bit more detail to it. So I'm just starting to paint on a second layer. And this will really start to thicken up now. And uh, it'll start to, you'll really start to see a difference in the depth of the colour. We had a week up north in um, Sutherland in uh, June and uh, so I've done a few paintings since then with this sort of background in them um, which I mean it could actually, it's very similar to the Lake District in some ways uh, but just such pretty hills. So again I'm just building on a second layer here to the hills and of course the hills in the distance um, are always fairly light and then 
colors get stronger as they come towards you. So once you get the second layer on, it really starts to come together. The colors really start to thicken up. This was a very fashionable colour in the galleries last year. One of the gallery owners was telling me that uh, all the paintings that were selling had a touch of cobalt teal in them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start on the dog and I am going to start to do a bit of um, colour mixing now. So I'm going to make them lighter at the top. That's where the light source is coming from. So uh, I've mixed in some white with my paints grey and I'm going to make the top of his back quite light. And I'm going to go back to the darker. So this is really the second, the second stage. I'm starting to add more toning to any three-dimensional features that I'm wanting to bring out. It does blend very well when it's, uh, when it's wet, but you just need to make sure you work fairly quickly with it because once it dries you won't be able to blend it at all, obviously. So I'm going to go back to my smaller brush the legs in the background, I'm going to paint them in so that you can tell they're behind the legs in the foreground and that will start to give it a bit more depth. And I'm going to add a lighter layer to the legs in the foreground just so they stand out. I do like all my animals to be happy. <laughs> so I'm going to give them a nice uh, smiley mouth. And in this layer, I would start to add in a lot of the texture. So you really need to use the feathering fan brush. I don't know if any of you use these uh, to add a bit of texture. I'm just uh, mixing up a slightly lighter shade of grey. And I'm going to start to add on some feathery layers. And you need to remember, of course, the way that the fur would run. I'm doing this from a slightly different angle because I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally paint from this angle. So that's just given us a bit of a texture to start to work into. Wash that out and then I'm going to use a rigger brush. It's mm -hmm. um, quite a good one for the fur now to start and add in a bit more detail. And I'm using the paint really quite thinly and I'm just going to start to work into the base layer that I've laid. Pick out some individual strands and add a few highlights. And what I would do once the initial tufty bits have dried is I would come back with the green in this case of the background and uh, paint into the dog as well um, just to tidy up any tufty bits that I wasn't happy with. If you just vary the direction of the strokes a bit, it gives you a slightly more realistic. I think all my paintings have um, animals in them or birds. Um, and I tend to, they always tend to feature. So I do do some figurative work, but the figurative work will always have animals in it as well. So that is a theme that sort of runs through my work. It's just something that's evolved, really. I've always enjoyed painting animals. I sort of develop them as little characters in my head. And, uh, and I like to paint the sort of the interaction either with them and a bird or a butterfly or a, or a bee that they might be chasing or looking at or something like that or it's an interaction between them and uh, the human. So my background colour is the, the green so I'm going to just paint into that as well. It's very difficult to sometimes to paint very fine lines but if you have painted a line that's a bit too thick and then you paint into the line you can make it much finer and you're not actually having to paint the line on, you're just narrowing it, painting into it. I've got my, my photograph of my meadow just for reference. 
but I'm really just using the colours and building up shapes that are loose sort of organic shapes. I'm not worrying too much about them being a particular flower or a particular shape. And eventually the whole of this foreground will be full of flowers. This is a very nice uh, yellow, it's called Indian yellow and uh, it's a lovely warm colour. Why do you always make white with the colours? Why do you not have them straight? At this stage to get a strength to the colour and, a, and the lightness that I want, um, I just find it's easier to, to add a touch of, of white to them. If you were using a colour like this on its uh, own is quite translucent, I'll show you in fact. Uh, so because I'm painting this on top of a green, even although it's quite a light green, you can see how translucent that is in comparison to the one that I've added a touch of white to. Sometimes it's nice to maybe restrict your palette slightly, so instead of using every colour available, um, I mean, some of my paintings that I do might only have three or four colours plus white and a Payne's grey. Um, some of them will have more than that, but I would never use uh, all of my colours available. I might use four or five and mix them, um, but sometimes you can get a more dramatic effect by <coughs> limiting your palette slightly. Yeah, so sometimes it's quite nice to add some vertical lines to the foreground in your floral images, like the stalks. Um, and again, that just adds an extra dimension. And you don't have to be too precise about them. But it definitely adds something. And then once I've finished adding my details and adding my stalks and building up my flowers, I would come back to my bees and add the details um, to them, add their, their legs and their wee feelers at the front. Does anybody have any questions? Is there anything people aren't sure about? Anything anybody would like to ask? It's interesting from my point of view to see how a painter would approach a piece of work from a designer's point of view as opposed to a fine artist. Many of the demonstrators that come here are fine artists. So I find that quite interesting. So thank you very much. Thank you.